So he's going to speak about uh, segment routing for uh, deployments in Cloud RAN. And uh, you know, we're at ENTC, we're testing a lot of open RAN solutions. And the guys in the radio access network, they think if the packet has made it over the radio, it should be good. And there's no need to take care of it uh, anymore because there's always enough bandwidth in the transport network, right? I hope you'll set us straight. <laughs> All right, so my name is Huma Bitgoli. I'm going to talk about the slicing and SRV6 specifically in the cloud RAM. Um, as you folks know, there is a new kid in the block. We call it the cloud RAM. It is data center computes tours that are building the components of the VDU and the VCU. And there is a, a thought out there that when it comes to putting these racks together for the cloud RAM, when it comes to the VDUs and the VCUs, or the tour on top of the, the rack, it's exactly like the data center or the AI type of uh, deployment. And I'm here to give a caution that maybe the computes can be processing power, but when it comes to that tour, there are a specific uh, requirement that you need to keep in mind. Maybe the legacy tours, they would work, but uh, when it comes to the cloud RAN, those tours are uh, stitching multiple segments of the network together. As an example, in this picture, as you can see, there is a front hall. There is SLAs for the front hall, low latency, low jitter, high throughput. And the same tour has to terminate the front hall from the radio to the VDU, which is another name really for the baseband unit, BBU. And the same tour needs to create a mid hall or the back hall to the core of the network or to the VCU. When it comes to front hall, low latency, cut through queuing, if you will. When it comes to the mid hall, the back hall, higher latency, and you might need deeper queues on the same tour to make sure that the SLAs of the front hall and the mid hall and the back hall are all correct. With that said, I don't wanna scare you with this slide. There is a ton more requirements that when it comes to the tour are already talked about SLAs. What does SLA mean? SLA means slicing. You need EVPNs on the front hall because front hall is a layer two beast as of now. Uh, we are working on bringing IP to the front hall from the radios to the VDU, but as of now, when it comes to eCPRI, it's a layer two type of environment, EVPNs, VPLS. But when it comes to the back hall or the mid hall, it's a layer three type of environment. What that means, IP. So two different slices, two different type of services, each with its own SLA. On top of that, you need to start thinking about keeping the radio and the VDU and the VDU and the VCU and the core all in sync, timing perspective, PTP. And you'd be surprised that PTP does not want to work with security, which is very important, as you folks know, when it comes to the 5G network because of IoT. These 5G networks are being used by federal governments all over the world for IoT, bringing uh, critical infrastructure into the network. And those critical infrastructure need security. They need encryption. There is quantum safe uh, stream right next door that is actually talking about all the securities that are needed in these type of networks. So security means latency, encryption, decryption, that extra latency and PTP, they don't go hand in hand. PTP wants time and stamping right away. Give me the right time and stamp. Security creates that extra latency. The other thing is simplicity of putting the network together. Underlay IGP, overlay BGP. Don't give me any extra protocols because my engineers, they don't like to work with extra protocols like LDP, God forbid, multicast. Keep it as simple as you can within the network. Putting all this stuff together, as you can see that tour, there is a lot of requirement that goes over that tour. Let's see what is the status of the coda as it stands right now. So when it comes to the wireless networks, we do have three type of deployment. 
when it is fiber scarce, we see in EMA, we see in APAC, they like to use VPNs, multi-tenant type of network. You can have enterprise wireless over the same network. You can slice the network via eVPNs, VPRNs, end to end from the radio all the way to the core of the network. What that means, the transport of the choice, segment routing, whether it's SRMPLS, SRV6, that's the transport of the choice. Traffic engineering to bring different SLAs into the network. Next, what we see in North America or some other vendors that are not fiber scarce is pure IP, base routing. They actually build their network with IPv6 because IPv4 address family has been depleted. Uh, the way that they have managed hasn't bring out too many IPv4 uh, addresses anymore. They have switched to IPv6. They usually deploy rings for redundancy on, or it's a hub and a spoke. Now when it comes to 5G or LTE advance, we are seeing what they call the hotel BBU and that's for the uh, broadband type of services. So they basically put these BBUs all in the same real estate. They connect them together via a tour and that connectivity between the BBU brings into the picture MIMO, meaning that multiple input, multiple output to your cell phone, and that's what creates these extra bandwidths that you get on your cell phone. I think last time I checked in North America, we were getting around 100 meg of download, 20 meg of upload on the cell phone. So that's how you make that possible with these hotel BBUs. Going forward, as I mentioned, when it comes to the cloud RAN, there is the front hall and then there is the mid hall or the back hall, and the picture gets a lot more complex. Now, there is a reason that we make this picture this complex. We didn't want to scare you. We just wanted to make sure that you see the different slices that the tour needs to deal with. As you can see, there's a front hall. As I already mentioned, the front hall is a layer two beast means eVPN, you need to make sure that that eVPN has the correct SLA, traffic engineering through the routers in the front hall. You need to make sure that your mid hall, which is IP specific, has a slice of its own. All this traffic engineering, all this slicing means the transport of the choice for the operators that are already using multi-tenant might be SRMPLS, for the operators that are using IPv6 in their network, the natural evolution is SRV6 to bring that redundancy and resiliency and slicing into the cloud RAM. Now, let me give you an example of the front hall and the type of issues that we need to solve in the front hall. So this is a typical front hall. As you can see, there is a router at the cell site, and then there is two routers that are aggregating the traffic and eventually you go to the tour that are connected to the VDUs and the VCUs. Now, when it comes to redundancy, that latency between the radio and the VDU has to be constant. To give you an example, right now, depending on the radio operator, that latency one way is around 100 microsecond to 200 microsecond. And the latency has to be constant when you're on the primary path and when you switch into the backup path. Depending on how you put your network, LFA might not be the choice of the redundancy and resiliency. Why? You can see in this picture that when you do a LFA, rather going over three routers, you might go over four routers. That extra router introduces extra latency, extra jitter. What does that mean? That means that if there is a jitter buffer on the radio or the VDU, they might underrun or overrun, and the radio might reset. This is why when it comes to segment routing, Canada path, SR policy, is the way to go, to make sure that your active path is traffic engineered north through three hops, 
and to make sure that your standby path is again traffic engineered through south three hops to ensure constant latency through the front hall so that radio and the VDU, they don't run out of sync. This is one kind of the problem that you need to solve in the front hall. The other type of problem, as I mentioned, is simplicity. So these networks, when it comes to the cloud RAM, they're being used for high bandwidth type of applications, IPTV. You know, uh, we do have tier one operators in North America that they put a 5G modem at home and they do ISP services, IP services over these high band 5G networks. Multicast is one of the issues we need to solve. So currently when it comes to multicast, there is a signaling. To simplify that, we need to make sure that, first of all, our multicast works with SRV6 type of transport. And secondly, we need to make sure that that signaling is removed from the network. One of the technologies we are working on is TreeSeed. Basically, TreeSeed, we are giving a segment, a seed to every type of uh, technology that is out there, node seed, adjacency seed. So we said, why not give a seed to the replication? What that means is that wherever within the network you need to create replication, you can use this replication seed for a point to multipoint point SR policy or a tree seed to create the replication. But when it comes to two replication points, you can connect it via a unicast SR policy. This is marrying unicast and multicast together to bring a simplified multicast solution for EMBMS and video into your future cloud RAM and 5G type of network. So as you can see right here at the bottom, that's the in cap of a SRV6 in multicast. The, fun the function is actually the multicast group that we use in a SRV6 header. Again, overlay IGP, underlay can be a controller or a static configuration, introduce that replication seed into your network, work seamlessly with your unicast network, and you can bring your multicast services into the cloud RAM. Security is another thing. When it comes to security from management plane, until now, MaxSec was the way to go. Why MaxSec? It's low latency, high throughput. It doesn't change your SLA. That said, when it comes to SRV6 specifically, or SRMPLS, to our surprise as of now, there is no security solution out there. So us in Nokia, we actually start using MaxSec engine <coughs> and MaxSec signaling, which is MKA, and we took it one step farther. We put that MPLS label or the SRV6 header into clear. This is how we start creating encryption, which is high throughput, low latency through a SR MPLS or SRV6 network. Again, IEEE 802.1 AE MaxSec engine is doing the encryption. It has been there forever. We know it's secure. We know it's government approved. But with the letter tweak, now you can actually start introducing the MaxSec into SRV6 network and to the SR MPLS network. This is why we feel going forward, at least on Nokia side, we have put together all the different components that is needed to create a cloud RAN type of solution from services point of view, from transport point of view, and from security point of view. The security and multicast with SRV6 is being solved via TreeSeed and the technology that we call AnySec, which is just MaxSec with SRV6 header into clear. 
when it comes to the latency and the slicing. Again, SR MPLS, SR V6, your choice. And when it comes to the different SLAs, we ensure that that encryption and that slicing transport end to end ensures that your front hall, your mid hall, and your back hall are getting the SLAs that you need to put your 5G and 6G network going forward. I think that's all I had to talk. Hopefully it was useful for everybody. Thank you. Thank you much, Juan. <clears throat> Very insightful, thank you, interesting. Um, we have two minutes time for questions. If there are any questions, I think there are uh, microphones in the room. Um, maybe while you're preparing, I'll just start um, with a question myself. I don't see any right now. Yeah, so, you know, the, the operators in the mobile space, they are rather conservative often, right? I'm not sure if you share the same uh, observation. I mean, how much are they, um, you know, willing to make this move to more security and uh, using SRV6 in the cloud range? Is that a more of a less of the technology challenge and more of a human challenge or the other way around? Well, I, I think, again, as I mentioned, the operators that are already uh, uh, in use with IPv6 moving to SRV6, just to bring that slicing, is just a natural fit for them. Uh, from the other operator point of view, uh, that they are already using SRM PLS today for a multi-tenant point of view, uh, segment routing is something that is known. Now, whether you want to have that MPLS stack to bring the different uh, uh, a slice into the network or whether you want to use the IPv6 and just move to the IP domain, that's you know their choice. But we do see a lot of movement toward uh, SRV6 just because of that uh, simplification of bringing IP technology into the network for traffic engineering and for slicing. Okay, thanks very much again, Human.